Welcome back to Torah in 10. I'm Jody Burkell, and I'm so excited to be here with you again. What's the life-changing idea Rabbi Sachs of Blessed Memory teaches us this week? The way we use words shapes our environments. We're talking today about the power of speech. King Solomon says, life and death are on the tongue. We can either build or destroy with our words. They are truly powerful. Rabbi Sachs teaches us the power of this idea and the truth behind it. But there are some truths that our own life experiences can teach us even more so. I'm sure we have experienced it in technicolor, whether we ourselves have used our speech negatively towards others, or we have been the victim of someone using their power of speech against us. In Hebrew, we call this Lashan Hara, evil speech. We know that in our homes, in our places of work, and in our community, how much we're affected by the words of those around us. The morale of many can be in the hands of even one person, taking us all down, lowering our productivity and our ability to reach our potential. The next two Parshas, Tazria and Mitzora are both about a skin condition called Saharas, which is often mistaken for leprosy, which is it is not. The condition affects the body, a person's clothing, and the walls of their home. We can't make the connection to any illness today. The Torah speaks of this as an affliction in terms of purity and impurity. So we need to understand what it is so we can understand how it impacts and connects to us today. When the Torah speaks about Saharas, we're taught about what happened to Miriam after she spoke negatively about her brother Moses. She was struck with it for seven days. Saharas was not an illness, but a punishment. The Talmud says that Mitzora means to slander. What happened when you got Saharas? The most obvious sign was a whitening of the skin, similar to when you embarrass someone and their face turns white. So if you did this, your face would turn white. The punishment was measure for measure. We read an important point in this Parsha. It says, he shall be unclean as long as the disease is on him. Being unclean, he shall dwell apart his dwelling shall be outside the camp. This is surely a punishment for evil speech. Think about it. The Talmud has a simple explanation. By this malicious speech, a person created division between a husband or a wife or between one person and another. Therefore, he's divided from the rest of society, forced to live alone outside the camp for as long as the condition lasts. Removing this one negative voice from the environment will help the entire group thrive. One negative voice can make a huge difference. And we learn something powerful here, which is that bad is more powerful than good. We are more inclined to notice negative experiences. We notice threats more than reassurance. Bad news travels faster than good news and often Good news doesn't count as, as news at all. We remember that one negative comment much more than we remember me many positive ones. And that's why Sarah Hannah Radcliffe in her book, Raising Your Kids Without Raising Your Voice suggests the 80-20 rule. 80 positive comments for 20 negative ones. And she suggests that in our marriages and when we have teenagers, we should change the ratio to 90-10. Words have power, but negative words have the greatest power. They are a truly destructive force. Where can we see this most strongly today? On social media. We're almost free from consequence to cyberbullying, to being rude, to being critical, or even offensive online because we're not face to face. Imagine if those who posted negative, hurtful, 
or malicious comments about others on social media were publicly exposed and they carried a visible mark of shame and for a period of time were excluded from public places. Perhaps this is the idea behind being blocked from Facebook. People would think twice before using speech to harm or damage others. And I'd like to add one more idea to the mix and that is the way we speak about ourselves can be the most damaging of all. You will never speak to anyone more than you speak to yourself in your head. So speak kindly to yourself. Rabbi Sachs teaches us that the way we use our words shapes our social environments. Words have the power to heal or the power to hurt. We should choose our words carefully. And that is a life-changing idea we can all use. Thank you so much.